Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 2019 release and Shutter exclusive Scream Queen, My Nightmare on Elm Street. This is a horror documentary film, which first of all, you have to know I love documentaries and obviously I love horror because those are my reviews. Um, but I want to say that this is a film I would say everyone should see, not just from a horror fan perspective, but just everyone should see because of the message here, because of the journey here, because of what it covers. Now, it's really well put together. I really enjoyed this film, but I will not be speaking spoilers in this review for a few reasons. One, I'm doing this through a screener that I got from Shudder. Thank you, Shudder folks, especially Sean Redlitz. And two, I just think this is a film that people should just see for themselves. Now, I'll talk about some kind of thematic stuff, my overall of what I thought about the film and what I liked about it. Um, I don't really have a whole lot that I didn't like. There was maybe one small nitpicky thing that I found that was a potential problem with it, which was during one of the interview portions, there's kind of a weird shaking up and down of the camera, which I assume was kind of an issue, which I think is also part of why they don't uh, show a lot from that camera. They do more of like a voiceover while they're showing, you know, movie clips and, you know, pictures and stuff like that. So I think they got some important stuff out of that portion of interview, but they, you know, um, did a good job kind of not using it too much so people couldn't focus a whole lot on that kind of weird movement. But it's a very, that's a super minor thing. Other than that, I think it's really something. So let's go over this. Uh, like I said, it's a Shutter exclusive. When I'm putting this review out, it is before it hits, so it's going to be hitting on the Thursday of the week that I'm putting this out. I'm sorry, I don't remember what the date is. I think, um, let me check real quick. I'm sorry, people. Real fast. Thursday, June 4th is when it hits Shutter. So just know that. Um, it's directed by Roman, I'm sorry if I mess up these names, Shimin Shimianti, Shimianti, I'm sorry, and Tyler Jensen. That's a much easier one. Uh, they start the film with good backstory on the horror industry at the time of Nightmare... Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge, which is what this basically focuses on. It's about Mark Patton, who definitely was the first Scream King or first male Scream Queen. And uh, they, it's all about Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge, and Mark Patton's experience with that film. And against the backdrop of what society was in that time and what he personally went through and, you know, how that's kind of shaped him as a person and how things went throughout his life and a lot of it kind of spawned from his experience with that film and have kind of changed him into the person that he is today which is very interesting so I think they did a great job early on establishing what the horror community was like and the horror industry at that at the time of that movie coming out but also societally what things were like as far as you know the gay community as far as the AIDS crisis going on as far as acceptance homophobia all that type of stuff um so that was really, really important to kind of have in there as context and especially to do it up front. So it's like, here's all the information you kind of need to know about the story you're going to have. So you have context, so you know what's really going on. So that was a very smart way to do it. Um, seeing Mark P Patton in this, hitting the, uh, the convention circuit actually made me really, really nostalgic for conventions. That's just a personal note for me because I love going to conventions. I've been to a lot. We missed one because of COVID-19, which was canceled, the Monster Mania one. But watching this just made me think, when conventions are a thing again, I cannot wait to hopefully maybe meet Mark Patton. He seems like an interesting guy. He seems like a cool guy. And for his contribution to horror, uh, I would love to talk to him, get his autograph, um, get a picture with him, maybe, I don't know. So what Mark says in this actually about meeting people at conventions is amazing to me. It hit me in the feels. Uh, I love hearing his type of sentiment um, from all celebrities when they talk about meeting fans at conventions, like how sincere he was about talking about knowing how much it means to these individuals and how, you know, he makes sure that he makes it a very positive experience for these folks because it's one interaction. It's that one interaction, and that person may be an icon for that individual, so it's a very important thing. I always feel like it's such an amazing thing when you come away from an experience with a celebrity at these conventions, and they they said something or they connected with you in a way that really meant something. And to hear Mark speak about how he views those interactions is exactly what the people attending these conventions 
want to hear that that's exactly how they want the celebrities to approach them not all of them do but i think a lot of them do and it was just nice to hear that from mark uh the music in this is amazingly 80s and actually the music in this is beautifully used it's paired up extremely well and it's just it sounds great i mean it's a lot of stuff technically in this other than just that little bit of camera issue uh technically very very good um, directing is really well handled. A lot of the framing for the camera shots are really good. The cinematography is nice. Uh, their, their editing of this in particular is really good. It is a tight film, in my opinion. There is no fat to be trimmed from this film. Uh, it's at, uh, with credits, it's like an hour and 39 minutes, but it moves fast. Uh, it's all important. And that's hard to do, really. I mean, there's so many films, especially documentaries, where you get done with it and you're just like, there's all this extra stuff in there that, why does it matter? Like, what does this all mean? It, it has no importance to what's going on. And that's not going on with this, and I really appreciate that. Because you end a documentary with like this, and not only are you fully engrossed in it, at least in my opinion, I was, and that's that's a great tell of a, of a really well done documentary and just well done film is that you don't feel like, oh, I need to go do this or I want to stop and go do this. Like you're fully engrossed and you're sitting there and in another world, basically, for the duration of that. And once you get to the end of a film like this, you're not like, ah, I feel like they kind of wasted my time because there's no time wasted with this one. Very well done. The talk about, uh, they talk about the film uh, Never Sleep Again, which is another very good documentary in this. If people have not seen that documentary, you definitely should. I really enjoy that one. It's all, it's about all of the Nightmare on Elm Street films. So just know that you should check that one out. Uh, they rewind at some point then to go over Mark's childhood and how he came to be the person that he is today, pretty much. Well, it kind of, it, it takes you up to the point of Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge, which is also important because then you can kind of understand who he was at that point when the film was made his perspective at that point and what he was going through so it really does help with the context moving forward for what you need to know about how he approaches things and you know his journey and everything like that and when he's going to tell you about his experience with the film and how he views stuff with it uh, but also then when he meets up with other people from the cast uh, as, as in this big reunion I think it was in Florida and, um, you know, how things kind of play out there when they finally have a, a chance to sit down and, like, really talk talk about things with the film. Um, and another thing I actually want to point out is that there, it, it's talked about in it, and, I'm you know, people talk about it all the time. Like, when there are franchises of films, it's always which one's the best and what's the least good, you know, like, or what ones suck or something like that. And people all the time say about the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise that the second film is the worst. Now, I don't know if I would necessarily agree with that. Uh, I also, I wouldn't say that I did watch the whole franchise a mm, few years ago now. And I do remember thinking that, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street 2 wasn't one of my favorite ones. But I also remember thinking there aren't any bad films in the franchise. So when you start talking about, like, what's the worst of a franchise, whatever's at the bottom, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad film. And that's kind of how I view it. It's just like Friday the 13th. That's another thing. Like... Well, I would think that the, the Jason X in the Friday the 13th franchise is kind of a bad film. But other than that, I don't really think there's a whole lot of, like, bad films. And even in the, in the case of Jason X, like, it's it has good stuff to it. So there's always something to enjoy. So my point being that when people say that it's a horrible movie, that, that uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 2 is a horrible movie, I don't think that's that's a good thing to say i personally don't think there's a bad movie in the franchise it's just when you're ranking them it's not towards the top that's and that's just how i look at it uh mark's personal stories in this about his time in hollywood are actually really really cool uh, i really enjoyed that portion of it and i'm not going to spoil anything about it like some of the celebrity names that come up because it's fun to not know when they're coming and when those names come up and in what context is very interesting um, like I said, the editing, awesome. They did a really perfect job of kind of intercutting the pictures, film clips, and interviews. It keeps you extremely visually engaged, but it also just keeps things moving. When you're just listening to a person talk, like you're doing right now, uh, it's boring to just look at them.
So I'm admitting that about my my content. It is boring to do that, but I also don't have the time to do what they did in this film very well, which is while people are talking, intercutting pictures and film clips and stuff like that. Yeah, you know, I would love to have the time to do that, but I really don't. So I appreciate when people actually watch this stuff. Uh, I really like the interview portions with Robert Englund in this. And to be honest, he's someone I could just listen to talk, to talk for hours and hours and hours. He's so eloquent the way he speaks. Um, his life experiences are super interesting and he has really interesting perspectives on things. And that's on display in this film. Um, I heard, I listened to a really good um, interview with him through Mick Garris's postmortem podcast. Definitely check that one out because it's definitely worth it. There's a large segment that is a stark reminder of how far we've come as a society in this uh, with calming the hell down about people's life choices. Uh, but at the same time, there's a far way to go. Um, and this is this film, for one of the reasons why it's very important, is it is a very good reminder that um, we have come very far in certain ways as a society. But at the same time, it's also important to remember that when things were drastically worse in you know different societal ways it wasn't really that long ago either so uh you got to keep that in mind and you have to kind of keep things moving like keep keep in mind like we still have to be cool to each other and i just don't get why you know people's personal choices that don't affect other people are a problem with with some folks it's just it, it's weird to me uh Really interesting side note here, Dr. Andrew Scahill, or Scahall, Scahill, uh, this individual talks in it about um, kind of deep diving on horror and subtext and horror and themes and horror and stuff like that, and he's a professor at Salisbury University, which is in Maryland, and actually I think I could drive to, I would love to meet this guy and just sit down and chat with him, because he seems like my type of person. Uh, really loves to deep dive into hor into film, especially horror film. And I did some of that in college, and that's kind of where I got the love for doing this. Um, so, man, I would love to talk to Dr. Andrew Scahill. If you see this review, Dr. Andrew, let's get together and chat. Have a coffee or something. Or a beer. Do you like beer? Anyway. <laughs> There's a great point that Nightmare 2 was the first of its kind, and it's tough for people to accept it. But that also makes it a very important film. Um, it's just kind of another one of those things where there are a lot of films that get made at a certain point in time. And they either get panned or they get trashed when they come out. Obviously Nightmare on Elm Street 2 is a film like that. And then later on, decades later usually, uh, it gets rediscovered. And it gets rediscovered by a lot of people or it gets rediscovered by one certain subsection of society and then it becomes important, or people realize that there are some great things about it, or there are just some important things about it, or great things and important things about it, and then it takes on a new life, or it just has a different context within where society has moved. Now, there are so many films like that, and I think it's very important that it's pointed out in this film that Nightmare on Elm Street 2 is like that. When it came out at the time, it wasn't necessarily the right time for it to be accepted and viewed in a good light, but that context has totally changed. We've totally updated, we've changed as a society, and even though it was a hard time for that film back then and a hard time for people like Mark Patton, um, it was important that that happened because we're here now partially because, at least in the horror community, partially because that got the ball rolling in a sense. There's a final confrontation in this film that is actually extremely important. Obviously, it's at the end because it's kind of like the payoff for the film. I'm not going to ruin anything about it or about how things go, but it's because it should definitely just be experienced because, like I'm saying, you should watch this doc. Um, but it's important. Definitely watch it. And I like that they had that at the end. I think it was a great way to wrap things up, really. There's a journey documented in this film, and it is profound. Only if you're willing to listen, though, to be honest. Um, if you're accepting of looking at something from a person's point of view, that being Mark Patton in this film, well, and the, the people who put the documentary together, um, just listen, you know? Just understand that this is coming from someone else's viewpoint, and this is coming from a certain set of experiences that someone had. And there's a lot to be learned from it, too, I think. 
So this reminds me that there, oh, I already talked about that, sorry, that all the films that got panned and are then rediscovered. So I have two final thoughts on this film. Documentaries like this serve as a great reminder that nobody's life is exactly the same. And to understand how someone experiences things in their life and deals with them, you need to know who they are as a person. And who they are as a person has everything to do with how they're brought up the life events that they experience, um, how they interact with other people, how other people treat them, how they then synthesize that and treat other people, and then how they choose to react to things. So this documentary really does point out that it's important to, you know, know the context, you know, know the person, know the context. And then that way you can understand better why someone deals with things the way they do or how they think about things. And I think too often, much too often in society, we're programmed to make assumptions and we're programmed to take everything in life and filter it through our own personality, our own opinion, our own upbringing, and that doesn't serve to understand another person. So we need to be able to set those things aside and just listen in a sense. So, And the last thing I had to say is, much the way people have identified Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge, as an important film for gay cinema, I think this documentary is important as well. Uh, it give it helps give that film in particular a whole lot of context. And because of that, I kind of want to watch the movie again. I, it, it really, watching it really did make me want to go back and check out uh, Nightmare 2. So I might be doing that soon. Uh, whether I do a review right now or not, I don't know, because when I do a review for it, I kind of want to do the entire, like, watch through the entire franchise and put out uh, reviews, boom, boom, boom. But um, it's really making me want to watch it, so I might just do that for myself. But uh, I did get uh, get some feels through this. I did get uh, emotional at times with this, and that's a great tell of a really well-put-together film, and specifically documentary. So I would say for anyone who's into documentaries, for anyone who's into horror, and just for anyone who's a human being, this is worth checking out for sure. Uh, with a possible five stars and half stars in play, I'm going to give this a five star rating. I think this is excellent, and there's not a whole lot wrong I can find with it. Um, well done. Very well done. Uh, so thank you everyone so much for checking this out. Please put comments down here when you see the film. Let's talk about it. And also uh, hit that subscribe if you can just to pay me back for anything you like that I do. Hopefully you like something on my channel because uh, I'm not making money or anything. So it's it's great to you know get that encouragement. And if you've already subscribed, go ahead and hit that thumbs up. Just let me know you're still watching. But regardless, thank you for checking this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.